everyone really loves shortbread. Whether it's just the crust for these spectacular lemon bars made with brown butter, or whether the shortbread is made with brown sugar and rolled out nice and thin and baked crispy, or whether the shortbread is the traditional butter, flour, sugar shortbread that you serve at holiday time, Shortbread is a versatile and delicious baked good. And I'm gonna show you three variations on Martha Bakes. Years ago, I was asked by a relative unknown designer, Ralph Lauren, to make his Christmas presents. And I made him shortbreads that looked just like this. They were a big hit, and this is the recipe. Two cups of all-purpose flour, sifted, two cups, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, that's a quarter, this is a one. So sift the flour and the salt. And this is why you sift, because you are left with some residue that you have to push through with your fingers. And then three quarters of a cup of confectioner's or 10x sugar. Now this gets added to one cup of butter, which is two sticks of butter, which is a half a pound of butter. There, that's our dry ingredients. And into the bowl of your mixer, one cup of unsalted best quality butter. You can just cream this. And while this is creaming, I'm just going to simply butter a 10 inch removable bottom quiche pan. This is a great pan in which to bake shortbread. Nice, generous amounts of butter. Don't throw this little piece of paper away because if you're continuing to bake all afternoon, just use that same piece of wax paper. There. So that's soft enough. And now just add, little by little, your dry ingredients. I'm sure back in the Tudor days of England when they started to enjoy shortbread, all of this was made by hand. No electricity, no mixers, homegrown cream and butter and wonderful stone ground flour. Oh, so see, look at this. This is mixing up very nicely into shortbread. Short refers to not short on ingredients, but actually short, meaning very full of fat. Lots of butter in this particular mixture. So that looks very nice. See how easy? I promised you it was easy. And it is. If you want to make these for presents, you can mix up a lot of batches of this, get them all pressed into your tart tins, and chill them, and bake them off. Plop that right down. And spread it with an offset spatula. Just like this. And you see it's still very soft, so you're going to get this chilled before you bake it. Very essential, because you're going to make marks on it that will be your cutting guides, and also holes in it to help it bake more evenly. So okay. that looks very good. Now to make this ultra, ultra smooth. Let's put a piece of plastic wrap right on the surface. And you can use your hand. If you have trouble really leveling this off, you can use the bottom of a flat cup measure like this. This works very well. Now here is our chilled dough. Looks like an ice skating rink. And uh, take the back of a sharp knife and we're going to score this into eight pieces. You can use a ruler if you don't trust your instincts, but this little crease will enable you to break the shortbread when it's baked. Now, traditionally, the Scots used a big fork to make holes in the shortbread, but you can uh, make a very nice design utilizing a bamboo skewer like this. 
and go all the way down to the bottom of the chin. Figure out your design first on one. So four holes, three holes, two holes, and maybe one hole, like that. Mark the whole thing and pop it right into the oven, 300 degrees for one hour. So after one hour, the shortbread just has a little golden tinge to it. And we're going to cut it with a serrated knife. It should cut very nicely. There, oh, great. These long serrated knives are very valuable to accomplish a task like this. Do you see why you score? That's exactly why it gives you a guideline. Helps if you have nice, steady hands. Don't drink too much coffee. And look, the perfect wedge of shortbread. This does taste better the next day and the next day and the next day for up to about two weeks. Really good. Keep it well wrapped in a dry tin is good and you have the ultimate shortbread. Better than anything you can buy. Lemon bars, lemon squares. I have always been looking for the ultimate recipe. I think we found it. Uh, brown butter shortbread crust. Three quarters of a cup of butter. We're using plugra butter. Plugra has a fancy French name, which means more fat. Uh, but in fact, it's made by the Keller Company right here in the United States, and it is excellent for baking. Uh, because it does have about 2% more butter fat than the other best butters. And now we're going to brown this over medium-high heat. Melt the butter. You'll see it start to bubble, and you want to get it off the flame right when most of the butter has turned a very pale, nutty brown. Very, very pretty. While that's melting, we can measure out our dry ingredients for the crust. We need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm just using a sifter to uh, sift it. and a half a cup of 10x sugar, and a pinch of salt. Run this through the sieve. There. So the dry ingredients are sifted, the butter is melting, the moisture is evaporating out of the butter, and the milk solids will then get that dark color. It adds a richness to the butter flavor, browning it like this, uh, a depth of flavor that you wouldn't get normally. One thing you do not want is to burn the butter. Can you see the nice medium brown color that it has turned? So now just pour that right into a mixing bowl. If there are any burnt bits, leave them in the pan like that, wipe them out with a paper towel before you wash, so you don't get any of that down your sink, and uh, chill this. We have one that's already chilled right here. Start to mix it up. One and a half sticks of browned butter, and add your dry ingredients. It might seem like a lot of dry to the butter, but it really does incorporate. And you can smell that rich butter. It really does smell delicious. There, it is done. So a little darker than the shortbread, the traditional shortbread that we created. Scrape everything off. And this is a thin crust, pre-baked for your lemon squares. And as I say, I've been looking for years and years and years, perfecting, trying, experimenting uh, with all kinds of recipes to get the best lemon squares. So here's our crust.
And here is the pan that we're going to be using, nine by 13 inches by approximately two inches deep. This is a typical baking pan. A little bit of softened butter in the bottom and on the sides. You want these bars to be released easily with no sticking whatsoever. So there, that's good. And we have a piece of paper that's nice and long can fold right into the bottom. And another piece that goes across. And we find that these bulldog clips work really well for many of our baking projects. Just to hold these out, if you're using a convection oven, you don't want this paper blowing all over your oven. This will prevent that. Nice and neat. And press your crust right into the bottom. It's not a lot of crust, but it is an important crust. So there, it's spread in the bottom. It's about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. Now, cover this with plastic wrap, chill, and then bake in a preheated oven of 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. While the crust is in the oven, I'm going to make the lemon custard filling. And it is very yellow because of the eggs. Six large eggs and one egg yolk. If you're gonna do a lot of baking, I suggest that you do find a local farmer who grows organic chickens to get your supply of eggs from. It's very important to feed your family the best quality food. And if you can just do organic, it would make a big difference. So now these get whisked. Add a pinch of salt. and now measure out your dry ingredients. A half a cup of all-purpose flour and two and a quarter cups of sugar. Lots of sugar. I love this old sugar bowl that I found at a tag sale. This is probably from an Italian cappuccino bar. That's how they serve the sugar on the bar. It's really kind of cool. So break up any lumps. Add your lemon juice, one cup plus two tablespoons. Fresh lemon juice, no substitutions. And the zest of a lemon. Choose a bright skinned lemon. Other lemons are beautiful right now. And use your great grater to take off the zest. Don't take off much of the white. You want only that bright yellow skin. That's where all the oils are, all the flavor. And stir that up. And then add your eggs. Quite a color, wow. So here's our filling. Now we get the crust out of the oven, fill it, and then bake it again. Here it is. You can see the gorgeous color and the smell is outrageously good. So now just pour this right in the crust while it's hot. Okay, so there is our filling. There are a few bubbles on the top and if you want to eliminate those, which will make a more dense filling on top of the crust, this is a silly thing, but it works. You can use a propane torch on low. Watch this. It eliminates every single bubble. So you will get a dense and beautiful crust. So now this goes into a 300 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Set your timer. So now they have been taken out of the pan. It's very easy to lift out with the paper. And we have a very hot knife, good slicing knife, and start in the middle. 
slice right through. You can get 12 big squares or 24 smaller squares. We're going to try to get 24 squares out of this. It helps to chill the lemon bars before you slice them. And have some confectioner sugar ready in a strainer to dust the tops. So there you have it, the best lemon bars on a brown buttered shortbread crust. Enjoy. I will. Mmm, so good. Crispy, yet soft. Chewy, yet tender. These are brown sugar pecan shortbread cookies. You do have to have some very finely ground pecans, a half a cup, and you can do that right in your food processor. So we're going to measure out the butter and sugar first. One cup of that same high fat unsalted butter called plugra. And we soften that up and add to that three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, packed. And it does make a difference if you pack or don't pack, so pack it in there. And one teaspoon of best vanilla. That looks good. And the dry ingredients, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We've been using a lot of flour today in our shortbreads. An odd ingredient, one quarter of a cup of cornstarch. I sometimes decant into a tightly covered glass container like this. Uh, it fits very well in my cupboard and I know I have it, I can see it clearly. A half a teaspoon of salt, especially if you're gonna be doing a lot of baking. A pinch of ground cloves, just a pinch, and a pinch or a fast grating of fresh nutmeg. That is it for dry ingredients. Very flavorful, fragrant, little bit of that perfume from the cloves and the nutmeg, I love that. And so this gets mixed in with your half a cup of finely ground pecans. Add your dry ingredients and this is it, a very, very simple dough again like all the other shortbreads. And you want to now take it out of the bowl and form it into two flat squares wrapped in plastic. Put one pile here and the other pile on this piece of plastic wrap. So make these into neat squares and get this into the fridge on a flat tray so that they can chill nicely. And we have some already. So this is what it looks like after it's chilled. It does turn a little bit darker color. And you can just use this piece of plastic wrap over the top and roll. You might be used to the baton type rolling pin, like this French rolling pin that I've had for many, many years. Or if you find this um, too strenuous, and it is strenuous, you could use the ball bearing type rolling pin. Now, once you've rolled the dough out, put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes until it's nice and hard. Here we have frozen dough ready to cut into squares or whatever shape you so desire. This is a great square cookie cutter. And uh, just start at one end, press, and cutting right on the sill pad makes it so easy. Release it onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And you should be able to get, oh, at least 12 cookies out of each square. Very important to move quickly because this dough, because of the nuts and the high sugar content, uh, is a soft dough and it does soften up very quickly. Now in keeping with the tradition of shortbread, we're going to make holes, just poke nine holes per cookie. If you're gonna make a lot of these, get your husband to make you a template 
so that you can just have something with nine nails in it so that you can just press each cookie. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and bake for approximately 10 minutes. So here we have a nice tray of pecan shortbreads. I think you're gonna really enjoy them. So today you've learned three different methods for making shortbread, three different versions for an old Scottish favorite. I hope you enjoy them. Recipes from Martha Bakes.